You're listening to Random Fit with hosts Wendy Batts and Ken Miller, winner of a Gold Markham Award for Digital Media. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining myself, Wendy Batts, and Ken Miller today on our episode of Random Fit. Um, Ken, how are you doing today? Things are good over here, Wendy. I'm looking forward to listening to you talk about what we're going to talk about today. This is a fun yeah, one. Yeah, well, our, our topic today actually came about because Ken and I were talking about the things that we love to do when we're not actually working and when we're not inside the gym. And I play recreational tennis. And Ken asked the question, Wendy, what is the difference between tennis and pickleball? So that is actually what we're talking about today. And uh, I learned actually a lot. I know a ton of history about tennis. I obviously know how to play it, but I really didn't know a lot about pickleball. So I did find it kind of fascinating to learn how it started and and just seeing the growth of this actual new sport. Yeah. And when when it comes to pickleball, you know, I don't know if I've mentioned it on this podcast, but I, I know that uh, with you, Wendy, we've talked about what I do for the community. One of the things I do here in my local town is that I am part of a foundation that supports parks and recs. And one of the things that came up in our last meeting was relining the tennis courts to incorporate more of the lining that you would have for pickleball. So they were going to have a dual purpose for the tennis courts. But uh, I just remember, you know, and that's happening today um, during this, you know, as as we record this, but about seven, eight years ago, when I was still working in uh, at, at the country club, they were having the same discussions regarding their tennis courts. So there was this back and forth, you know, why should we put more lines? And, you know, so of course there was this, the, the tennis group were saying, no, let's keep it tennis. And the pickleball's like, no, just add the lines, but then it's going to kind of clutter up, as they were saying, it was going to clutter up the court with more lines so that they can play pickleball. But there was such a growing um, audience or a, a group of players now forming a pickleball group where they would practice there and then they would compete against other um, country clubs in the area. So it was growing even seven, eight years ago. So now to discuss this here, to see <laughs> that it's making its way um, towards the public parks, um, I mean, that's really a testament to how much the sport is growing. Yeah, I mean, in our in our community, in my neighborhood, actually, uh, we have six uh, tennis courts and there was a conversion of three of them. So three of them have the pickleball lines now for that very reason. You know, again, we're trying to be all inclusive and let everyone play whatever they want. And because we do have the, you know, the actual court structure is the same the uh, there's a big difference between a tennis court and a pickleball court because the size is different it's not as wide it's not as long i mean definitely the rules are definitely different in both games the equipment that's used is different so there are some major differences plus you're going to see that more of the senior population has really gotten more involved into pickleball in relation to tennis because there's a lot less running and um, but, you know, when you're when you're really kind of thinking about the rules and how to play, I guess, based on what I've heard, pickleball is easier to pick up. So if you've never really played tennis and you've never really played pickleball, I think from what I'm understanding, pickleball is easier to play because, again, you're not running as far. The rules are a little more simpler. But if you listen to the history of pickleball, it actually makes sense. And we'll actually get into that here and a little bit later, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and when you mentioned like the the active aging getting involved with pickleball and that's exactly what happened again, you can imagine if it's if it's more of the country club setting, you have a, uh, you have more than a few retirees um, and a few of them, you know, I had a few clients that were playing tennis, but then I could see that they were spending, you know, one or two days playing tennis and then one, two, maybe more days playing pickleball to where they they started to phase out of tennis because like what you're saying Wendy the, the you know the 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 field of play is a lot smaller there wasn't as much you know they didn't have to cover as much of the court but you're going to explain the equipment in a little bit but they it definitely meant less running less less I'd say you don't have to be that much faster but you 
you still have to be fast. You still have to be quick. You just don't have to cover as much, much spare, as uh, much space. But the other part of it is you don't have the, 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 the bounce of a tennis ball, but now you have the pickleball, which made it easier to react. So it played to more of what their capabilities were. And overall, I think it was a much more even play when you talk about the, the active aging population. So you didn't have to depend on that one person that had the good knees, right? right. <laughs> had the shoulders to, to play tennis. Now it's like, okay, I just need to take a couple steps to the right, a few steps to the left, a couple steps back and I, I cover my area. So, yeah, so I've never played it. I've only talked to my clients who've played it and they have a ton of fun at it. Oh yeah, well our tennis pro that we have, she's actually taking up pickleball and now she's like wanting to be the pickleball champ. They they do have tournaments now for pickleball. I mean, it really has grown a ton in popularity, which you know makes sense, especially if you wanted to try something different. The main difference too, like I said, you know, that there is differences in the size of the court but also when you said equipment, uh, you know, it, most of us are very familiar with tennis. So you have the traditional tennis racket, how it's strong is always different as well, because there are different string types that's going to allow the ball to do different things. A tennis ball is a rubber ball with felt around it. We all pretty much know what a tennis ball looks like. But pickleball is really it's a smaller it's just a paddle and it has a light uh, plastic low bouncing ball that you're using. So that's the type of equipment. So both of them are fairly inexpensive. Now, again, rackets can get very expensive and I'm sure paddles can be more on the, on the pricier side than just a, a starter pickleball paddle, if you will. But, you know, you do need to be careful with the shoes that you have on, you know, the type of tennis shoe, you don't want a black surface, anything that's going to scuff up the tennis um, the tennis court, but also too, you want to protect your feet. And so, especially in tennis, when you're serving, if you have a pretty, pretty hard serve and you're putting a lot of effort into your serves, then you're dragging maybe the, um, the back foot. And so therefore the toe box on the inside tends to wear out, but tennis shoes are made to support that because that is a well-known thing. Um, so you want to think about what it is that you're trying to do, what you want to learn, you know, which one you want to learn. I think both of them are unbelievable for hand-eye coordination. You have to talk. It's really fun because you're usually, you don't have to, you can play singles or doubles, but if you have a doubles partner on the social side, I mean, that's why I joined tennis is I wanted to learn. I wanted to meet people in my neighborhood. I wanted to, to, you know, captain a team because I thought I was all that. It's way harder to captain than you would imagine because of schedules, but it's, it's a lot of fun on so many different aspects other than just the sport itself. I think it's, it's huge, especially if you need to get out and meet people, I would tell you look into tennis or pickleball. Yeah. And, you know, to, to that point, Wendy, again, if you're, you know, again, a lot of my clients were of the retirement age and this was one of the, things that they would put on the calendar. So just like they would have maybe a, a, a hike scheduled, they would have a pickleball match scheduled. And uh, one of the big things, and you brought it up already, Wendy, is like pickleball tournaments. And there's, there were pickleball tournaments, like I said, at that site, at that location, but they also traveled around and, you know, played pickleball against other, 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 uh, country clubs at that, mm -hmm. at, you know, in that general area. And, you know, it was a great way to meet other people from other areas, not just, you know, what was in their backyard, if you will. So, you know, they, they would get their exercise. They would, you know, of course do the, you know, have coffee afterwards or, or have a little lunch afterwards. But the, the, the idea of, you know, four, eight people, depending on how many people, you know, how much court they're taking up or how many people they have, going on, you know, they can have like little um, mini round robin tournaments within within the location. But overall, it was that, you know, the social aspect was the bigger part of it. And again, if if, you know, uh, playing full court basketball or even singles tennis, if you don't if you don't uh, if you don't have a partner, you know, that can be pretty that could be pretty demanding on the body. And like what you and I already talked about, I mean, there's a lot of court to cover, but here you, you, you know, you, you, the, the physicality of it all isn't to this tennis, um, which is what my clients love the, love the most. They just have to really communicate, okay, you've got, you know, this is yours, this is mine, this is yours, this is mine. 
And, you know, they were able to get a great, you know, great session of exercise and play, um, you know, you know, on that court. So it was, it was really good. It was really yeah. good for them. They, they loved it. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. And it's one of those things I know I really enjoy it when I travel. You know, I really get bummed when I can't play. But, you know, we've got good teams. I mean, there's a bunch of different opportunities to play. There's a lot of different. You've got USTA. You've got Alta. You've got uh, T2, which are usually like five or, you know, five weeks or so. And you can do working women or, or men or, or mixed. I mean, so you can play with your your husband or your wife or your friends or whatever, you know, and it, and, and it just makes it fun. And, you know, you don't want to let your team down. You want to try to be there as much as you possibly can and play the line that you should play. But, you know, it actually made me go back and I didn't realize the history of tennis was that it dated back into the 20 or no, it was the 12th century. And, you know, it, it was founded again in ancient Greece. It seems like everything kind of starts in Greece, but then <laughs> Historians pinpointed it that it was born um, in the 12th century, and it was actually a French game. And I'm gonna, I'm going to, I, I, I don't even know if I should try to say it. If it's poum or je de poum, <laughs> you're the one taking French, Ken. So help me out here. <laughs> je, je de poum is is how I'm reading it. But okay, feel free to comment. <laughs> I took sign language as my foreign language, guys. So. Uh, and today on Random Fit, myself, Wendy Batts, and Ken Miller are not talking about how bad my foreign language is. We're actually talking about tennis versus pickleball. Um, but, you know, when you're thinking about how far back this dated, you know, they they had this court, they had a net, and they were going to just volley back and forth. They were actually started using their hands first. And then over time, it progressed back to using a leather glove. And then, you know, once technology came out, that's when the rackets came out. And again, you can get all different types of rackets and different sizes of rackets. Um, but, but, you know, when you're thinking about where it even started, the game actually evolved over the 15th and 16th centuries. And again, it was in France and England. And Eng England, goodness, can't even talk. And the first tennis racket showed up in Italy during 1583 so when we say it's dated way back i mean tennis has been around for a really really long time yeah and you know i think with with tennis i mean it's 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 definitely one of the one of the more popular sports in the world and of course nothing you know nothing compares to soccer or football um but when it comes to tennis i mean i've i've, I've actually had my share of of tennis players as far as training and the training and condition. I can't imagine what it was back in the day when, you know, before exercise, before strength conditioning, before working out to play better came around. But still, I mean, if, if you imagine, you know, being around in that 15th century and <laughs> again, the, I'm sure the, the, the weight of the ball, the bounce of the ball and, and the, I would say the, I would say ancient or one of the, the earlier forms of the ride, you know, when you, when you look at those like museums, like those sports museums, and you look at how the equipment was back in the day, I mean, your skills had to be that much better because <laughs> definitely the equipment wasn't helping you out. Right. It, it wasn't about your strings, whether it's more no, control right. or more performance yeah. or more power. So it was yeah. really just, this is the racket that you get. The heads were a lot smaller Right. You know, so you really did need to make really good contact. But, you know, if you keep reading on, it was 1870. Again, when you're thinking about where this started, the first indoor match um, happened um, at Wimbledon. So the England was, you know, was the first one to say, let's do this all England croquet club. Let's do an indoor type uh, court. And that's actually, you know, when we watch Wimbledon, I mean, it dates back all the way from 1870. Um, I, you know, that's one of my bucket lists It's to actually go to Wimbledon. I mean, I've been to the U S open, um, one of the earlier rounds and I, and I will say that I had a chance to watch a uh, Jennifer Capriati later. I think she later in her career, like she took some time off and she came back and I saw her in the early round and, uh, she was definitely just, uh, she was a force on the court, but that's, that was my one exposure to one of the majors, you know, when it comes to tennis, but Wimbledon is definitely on my on my list, you know, to see, to see that grass court. But uh, yeah, I mean, to think about the history that goes back into tennis and how far and, and, and how 
cultured that sport is within within um, within uh, England. I, I just that like I said, that's that's just one of my one of my bucket lists. I, I'll watch it, Wendy, but I won't play it like you do. But if, <laughs> well, if we're, yeah, if again, I'm winning, making myself sound pretty good. I'm, I yeah. may not be all that, but you know what? I go in with that winning mentality, and I always want to win. So. There you go. And, yeah. you know, and and I think it's important, too, because if it's something that that you find interest in, it is a lot of fun. You know, again, you've got to think that you're moving in three planes of motion. You're you know, you need to have good flexibility. So always want to keep that in mind if we're bringing it back to on the fitness side of it. You know, there are times where you can take breaks in between each, you know, each uh, game. And then, of course, in between each set and then, you know, depending if you have if if you tie, you know, there's tiebreakers. So it, there's a lot that goes behind playing tennis. Like you definitely want to know the rules of the game. You want to know how to say the score. So if it's something that interests you, I, I strongly suggest getting a coach so you don't pick up bad habits. But you can actually start playing tennis for under $100. I mean, and that's what the shoes, that's what the racket, that's what the cannonballs. And, you know, really just going out. And, and my son and I, we do this for fun. We, he's got a little kid racket. And we just go to the courts and we try to hit. And, you know, he loves golf. He loves baseball. He does not know anything about tennis. And so if he makes contact, it's a fair point for him because it doesn't matter if it stays in the court or not. And I have to hit it directly to him where I lose a point. So, right, right. but it's a good family thing. And it's, and it's easy to do if you have the courts available and you do have a racket. But that then, you know, most of us know tennis. So when you're thinking about pickleball, I thought pickleball was just something that was I knew that it was around, but I didn't know when. And, and I think finding the, the history and looking at the differences between the 12th century versus ready for this 1965, I think it was. Um, yep. There were three dads, guys, three dads that needed to try to do something for their children and try to came up with, you know, come with, come up with something that was creative. That was something to keep them busy, but they also didn't have to run around everywhere. So they kind of keep, you know, kept them contained. And that is actually how pickleball was formed from three dads <laughs> trying to keep their kids busy. And now look at it. <laughs> Necessity is the mother of invention, Wendy. So right. if you're talking about three dads, yeah, they're not going to want to be inside the house. <laughs> Go outside. But I, I just can't believe it's been around since 1965. And here we are. You know, my first exposure to pickleball was seven, eight years ago. And that's the first time I just thought it was just something that some marketing guy had put together. It's that, you know, because can you imagine? It's like, hey, we have all these um, table tennis paddles and we got a bunch of wiffle balls. Um, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? Oh, I know. Let's uh, let's call it pickleball. And let's, you know, let, let's let the kids whack at it and let the, all the older adults, you know, have their, ten and it's not going to go, you know, down the street as if you had to hit a tennis ball. So that's, that's when we would grow up, you know, just to get over boredom, we would have the tennis racket and the tennis ball. And that thing would just, we would just rocket that thing down the street. But if you, we have a, we actually have pickleball paddles and we have the pickleball balls which is basically a heavier i think it's like a heavier wiffle ball mm -hmm. and it's something that you know i i took my kids out and we just we just hit it around on the on the you know the street and actually on the edge of the basketball court and they were able to hit it with control right not like a tennis ball you hit that thing it just goes in the wrong direction it's gonna go right well the the pickleball ball doesn't go that far right it's just it's definitely manageable you can put some you can put some weight behind your swing right but it's not going to go too far which i can see where these dads you know they said okay let's get the wiffle ball and let's go ahead and go at it and you know no one's going to have to go a quarter mile down and go chase a, a whip you know a, a pickleball so that that's where i just ironically enough i had a, a access to a pickleball and ball well, so, there you have it. And and again, yeah. when you're thinking about popularity and it probably if you think about the timing and how long both of them have been around, you know, you've got over 87 million people playing tennis worldwide. And then I think the stat that I found that and uh, the number of people playing pickleball grew ready for this 159 percent over the last three years. And so when you're thinking about that, I mean, that is. That is something to where we can say now there's 8.9 million people that are involved now 
actively playing pickleball and it is continuously growing. It is one of those sports that is on the move. More and more people want to learn about it. And then that led me down another rabbit hole, Ken. And I know you and I talked about this, so I won't steal the thunder of this, but my number one question was, why is it called pickleball? Yeah, why is it called pickleball? Yeah? Yeah. Well, let me just tell you about this because it has absolutely zero to do with pickles, which I mean, I'm like, okay. And then I thought, well, three dads, maybe one of them really liked pickles, you know, but actually it was um, Joan Pritchard. He, um, they, That person had come up with the name. It's a reference to the thrown together leftover non-starters and the pickle boat of crew races. I, who knew, right? <laughs> so I had no idea about any of that. And then I started going down again, even deeper, like I did the court, you know, where the championship match is played. I'm like, I, I would have just assumed it was a dome. No, it's called the pickle dome. You've got a pickler who is um, a pickleball addict. You've got, you know, oh, the poach, which again, is the same type of thing that you do in tennis. When you poach a ball, you're trying to, you know, get it um, a crossover into your partner's side and you're, you're hitting the shot versus them. And then of course the smash and some of the other names are the same, but I thought it was hilarious. Um, there's also something called a deal ball, like like a dill pickle. Um, and that just means a dill ball is a ball in play. <laughs> That's a lot of terminology. I had to write it all down. So if you see me looking yeah. at my notes, I am legitimately looking at my notes because I learned so much and I found it all absolutely fascinating so hopefully y'all do too <laughs> well if you, if you think about it though i mean i mean every sport has their naming right so with tennis you have you know your love for zero right you had advantage um and what what do you call the you have a tie break but then you have a add what well, how do you how we do have you deuce sport? like if yeah, you're yeah. yeah yeah so then it's add in if you get the point add yeah. out if they get the point and then you have to win by two. And then you have to win by two. Right. So <laughs> why can't pickleball have theirs? Tennis has theirs. Pickleball has theirs. Well, that's true. That is definitely true. <laughs> but, you know, another thing that I found interesting, you know, when you're looking at tennis, there are a lot of, you know, men and women playing it. But um, there are actually more men playing. And it's pretty equal. But there are more men right now at 53 percent playing pickleball than women, which is at 47%. So again, you know, it is pretty equal, but men are definitely taking to it more. And I know that you also said, you know, Ken, in the very beginning that some of your older clients are kind of getting more and more interested in pickleball because yeah. they don't have to run. They still want to work cognitively on their hand eye coordination. Yeah. Um, but, you know, more people that are 55 and up are going into tickle or tickleball, pickleball, pickleball, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, and, you know, there's about 14% of Americans right now playing pickleball. 14%? 14%. You happen to know which, which country plays it more? Um, you know what? I did not pull that up, but that is a good question. I figured, if anyone I mean, wants I to know, put it in the comments and, and yeah, Ken and yeah. I will do some research on that. <laughs> well, I just figured since it was created in um, Bainbridge, Washington, that that would be something that would be more unless it's that close to the border canadian border just took off more in canada than it did here in the u.s um, i don't know we're speculating here but nothing that we we don't do a, you know a bit of here on random fit with myself here ken miller and wendy bats talking about tennis and pickleball pickleball being one of the fastest growing sports i gonna say in the u.s but with only 14 percent. but hey when you have a Eight million people playing it now across the world. That's a lot. That's nothing to scoff at. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And then, like, you know, players that were 55 and up or the largest age bracket. Um, again, yeah. this was in 2021. So that might be changing, but that was at 19.8%. Players aged 18 to 34 were the second largest bracket. And then making up 18.5 are the total participants. Um, were were that that second bracket so when you think about it it is something that all ages can can really participate in you're going to see younger people probably start out in tennis over pickleball 
Um, I think that might be changing, especially if somebody's interested in ping pong. Because to me, it seems like ping pong would be, uh, I don't know, but I have never really played pickleball. But yes, you are on a tennis court. So, but it seems like with the paddles and the plastic balls, it could be something. But because of the equipment, one of the things that I also thought was interesting is that pickleball is very controversial. And I was like, I don't understand. How can it be controversial? Well, apparently it's when it people are saying it's not very popular and it's the people that don't play pickleball that don't like right. pickleball. And it's the people that live by the pickleball courts that don't really like the pickleball, especially if they've never played it or they have zero interest. And of course, I'm diving deeper in because I want to know the why's. And it is because of the sound. And I mean, I guess I never really thought about it because our tennis courts are not close to our homes and, you know, it's more closer to a pool area and then there's a park area. So it's definitely not in, in, um, where you can really hear anything or notice anything, but apparently some of the houses that live close to courts because yeah. of the plastic ball and the paddles, it makes a really loud noise. So people that want to have their windows open and everything, they, they can't do it because it's so annoying. <laughs> that, that is, that is one of the, the bits of resistance to relining the tennis courts because the, so where my son swims um, for swim class, I'm out there, I'm in the park, I'm getting whatever workout I can get. Um, but there's a pickleball court right there. And on the other side of the fence, right to the court is the neighborhood. Now, Wendy, I, I, I I'd say, you know, look for it, look for a, you know, wherever they're playing pickleball and just sit there and listen. And you'll know what I'm talking about, because when you think tennis, you, you, you know, you, you get your racket around and the ball takes a little time to travel because if you're playing the far ends of the court, right, the, the ball takes time to travel, right. And then it's going to bounce. And then the next person swings and however long you volley. But because the space or the distance between the players on the opposite sides of the net, you're going to hit the ball more frequently, right? Because it, it, the, the paddle and the uh, pickleball itself, that makes a noise. And then when the ball hits the ground, that makes a noise. And because you're so close, the ball is hitting the paddle more frequently than a tennis racket would hit a tennis ball. Right. So you hear every I mean, it's basically wood on plastic, wood on plastic back and forth. And it's not quiet. It's not quiet, <laughs> especially when they get into it and they say, you know, and they're you know, they're not they're not screaming like, you know, like a lot of these tennis players, you know, there's they, they get that big old grunt. And they big yell when they hit the ball. No, here it's just like you hear the paddle on the plastic ball. And that's what makes the noise. And you hear that more frequently compared to when you would hear a tennis racket hit a tennis ball. So when it comes to the noise, I mean, it's a legitimate <laughs> comment because if you just sit down five minutes and watch at least two courts going on at the same time, and you'll know what the controversy is about. I mean, it's great oh, sport, I, I, but yeah, that, that's one of the negatives. I definitely, I mean, I don't have anyone close to us that are the pros that are out there making all their noise, you know, and their sounds. And again, guys, I mean, there is a purpose for those sounds because, you know, when you're doing that, it's actually contracting more muscles so the player can hit it harder. So that's why you'll hear a lot of the moans and grunts. It's not that they're doing that to just annoy people that are watching <laughs> those games. There is purpose behind it. But right. yes, I could I could only imagine because if you're hearing that constantly and you live by the courts, I, I get why why people may not like it. But Anyway, um, you know, Ken, I could probably talk about tennis uh, and, and all the fascinating things I learned about okay. pickleball. So I was glad that you asked me that question because I'm like, you know what? Let's talk about this on Random Fit. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And as you know, for those of you listening to us here on Random Fit, you know, Wendy and I, we just, you know, even though the title is Random Fit, one of our underlying goals is to see what we can do to get people to understand movement better, right? Whether it's like what we're talking about today with tennis and pickleball um, as an avenue for recreation and sport. If you can find a sport that resonates with you, that is compatible with uh, your, your skill and your activity level, I think that the, the sport of pickleball as it's on the rise, as Wendy was saying, you know, it, it is, it is something that's not as physically demanding as tennis. So if you want to work on your hand-eye coordination, you want to 
be social. You want to get outside when the weather's nice. This is this is a sport and activity that you might want to try. Just look for your, I mean, as you said, Wendy, there are organizations that support the sport of pickleball. And if, if it's any question, just go onto your local map and look where the local tennis courts are. <laughs> and chances are, if you go there, there's going to be sign-up sheets or there might be even a pickleball game going. So again, that's one of the things that, you know, as far as our goals for this podcast is, is to help you understand how movement of affects us different ways, not just about going to the gym or working out in your garage. It's just about, you know, understanding some of the more random aspects of movement. But if we can shed some light on something that helps you, helps motivate you to get outside and move and be more active and be more integrated into the environment and get healthier through it, you know, that's that's one of the goals of our podcast. So with that being said, for those of you listening to us here on Random Fit, on behalf of Wendy Batts and I, myself, Ken Miller, we want to thank you for your time in putting us on. You know, we know you have a lot of choices when it comes to podcasts and audiobooks that you can be listening to. But the fact that you've listened to us, we really appreciate you, you know, taking the time and learning what we have to share. So if you like what you listen to, please like, follow, subscribe, share, and download. Um, but more importantly, if there's something that you want to listen to, let us know. Um, through the comments, through however you're listening to this podcast. So again, thank you again for listening to us here on, on Random Fit. Until next time, take care and be well.